It is Tech Tuesday here, and we are going to go deep into the world of robotics. Drew McCaskill, of course, my partner in power, sticking around, and let me welcome electrical engineering and robotics professor, Dr. Carlotta A. Berry. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Good to have you on. You know, I comb the internets, the Twitters to find interesting people, and uh, you're out there in them Twitter streets talking about robots, and I was like, robots? Black women doing robots? Please come on and talk about it. All right. So before we get into what you do, are the robots going to take over the world? And I'm <laughs> thinking right now they probably should, except that robots are being pro- programmed by people who don't look like us. So maybe they shouldn't. I don't know. Thoughts and prayers. So exactly what you're saying. If robots do take over the world, we need to make sure we're in the room. And that's the goal for what I do, because there's a whole area looking at right now, artificial intelligence, ethics and bias. And it is biased against Black people because Black people are not in the room writing the code for those robots. So when they do take over, we need to be in there to be like, oh, we don't want it doing that. So that's no, why oh, I Where's the I plug? Do. We need to know where the, where, the, where the outlet is so we can unplug them suckers. That's what we need. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The plug. Uh, so, Dr. Barry, how, how did you get into robotics? Um, it was kind of a crazy story. I was an undergraduate student at Georgia Tech. I had decided to do engineering. And when I took a robotics class, it was one of the few classes where they didn't let us touch anything. Only the grad students got touched the robot. And I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. So I said, if I ever go and become an engineering professor, I got to do robotics that connects with people. Everybody gets excited about a robot, even if you don't understand what you're looking at or what it's doing. So it's a great way to connect with people. And that's how I got my start. I worked at Ford Motor Company as a controls engineer, and I programmed the robots. And then I've been in robotics ever since. And now I do robotics education and outreach. So what are robotics? Like we, we've seen the machines, you know, in the Amazon warehouses, uh, Elon Musk tried to um, show us some sex robot, uh, which was a disaster a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've seen the Ford Motor Company, the robots putting on the widgets and stuff. Do you program those? Do you build them? I do mostly software. So I'm an electrical engineer and electrical engineering is controls. So that's basically writing artificial intelligence to make the robot do what you want it to do. So that's why I talk about you got to have diversity in that room, because if a bunch of white guys are programming your robot, that's when you get robots that don't recognize black people or the one that recently had that man arrested because the AI thought he looked like a driver's license from shoplifting. So I do more of the controls and the software than the building of robots that's normally mechanical engineers but that's the other cool thing about robotics is it hits on a lot of different areas can you talk about you you talk a little bit about inclusion at inception as it relates to ai and and um and being behind the scenes in the tech right um melinda gates i thought i honestly thought that that we were going to have like a total revolution in tech about five years ago when melinda gates got on stage at World Economic Forum and said that um, we know for a fact that if you don't build inclusion into these technologies, bias automatically appears. Like literally she said, algorithms will turn yeah. racist on you in a heartbeat. And, and I was thinking, it. oh, well, Melinda Gates said it like other white people, other people in tech, they will all sort of rally around this. What's going on in tech right now that you can talk about in terms of how how who's who's helping to combat it? Are there any people that are doing a good job at it? Well, I'm obviously biased and I'm a yeah. member of Black and Engineering and Black and Robotics. So I'm gonna say we're doing a good job at it. But I think part of doing a good job at it is amplifying the problem. Mm-hmm. And there are gatekeepers. Unfortunately, there's gatekeepers and the gatekeepers look like the people who are there because people are more comfortable working with people who look like them. So what's going on right now is you have to get them young. That's why we do outreach, because these kids are being turned off from STEM, math, technology in fifth and sixth grade. So they're never even getting to where we are. They need to see more role models that look like us. we got to amplify Black STEM, normalize it, and support it so that the little girl who's sitting in fourth grade math and when somebody turns her and goes, girls aren't good at math. She's like, no, yes, they are. Cause I know some black women engineers. Mm-hmm. So we're actually losing them at a much lower threshold, probably than what Melinda Gates was talking about. I think all her outreach work is great, but we have to get there at a younger level and we have to stay there with them all the way through college because there are barriers all the way. We like to say, it's not a pipeline, it's a journey. But for women and black people, that journey has alligators and moats 
and arrows and darts and microaggressions and all this stuff going on where they go, you know what? I'm out. Yeah. Whoo. So how do we get the, so what was your entry point? So it wasn't just college. Like you, you had to already yeah. be good at math to be in an engineering program. Like what, what was the thing that sparked your, your love of electrical engineering yeah. and, and getting involved in math? And I'm, I'm about to show my age. Um, there was no real cell phones or internets, but I was in a program called Inroads in high school. What? Was, I'm on the board. I'm on the really? board. Hey, yeah, look at that. Hey, so, Inroads. Yeah, when I was in high school, um, I was good. I was at a magnet school and I was good at math and science. And they had us go to a career counselor and she said, Well, have you considered engineering? I said, the train conductor? <laughs> and they were like, that's not what engineering is. And I had to walk to the library after school and look up engineer because no cell phone, no Google, none of that. And I was like, I wanted to teach high school calculus, but I guess that looks all right. I'll give it a try. So that's why I have a dual degree from Spelman and Georgia Tech, because I wanted to keep the math degree just in case the Georgia Tech thing didn't work out. So the education and the engineering came later. That was after getting to Georgia Tech and not having any black women or any black engineering professors. And I was like, man, this is fun. This is interesting. But the people teaching me are not fun, not interesting and don't want to make me stay here. So I'm going to become an engineering and robotics professor because I need to be on the other side pulling people through because right now they running me away. So what does one on one look like for people who the young people who are listening in the cars with their parents right now and maybe they're 10, 11 years old? What what what's the entry point? How do you grab them? So the entry point and I get asked this question a lot. I actually have a whole blog about it because I get asked it so much is get your kids hands on some stuff creating, not just being a consumer of technology, get them off the video game and show them how to make a video game. Right now there's free software online, code.org, girls who code, boys who code, um, all of them, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, they all have STEM programs now where they can learn how to do these things for free. VEX, VEX has free virtual coding online as well. When I teach outreach programs for schools that can't afford to buy the robots, we go to these free websites and I get on Zoom with them and I show them how to write a program to make their little virtual robot drive around in circles. This stuff is free. Legos, you can start with Legos. <laughs> Building towers, tinker toys, anything. Let them go take a pen apart and figure out how to put the pen back together. All of that is the entry point for engineering. Creativity and innovation is the way to go. And reward Nothing. kids for doing it. Reward them for taking Absolutely. stuff apart and putting it back together. Yeah. My daughter's Girl Scout troop does... Vex Robotics, First Lego League, you know, there are these programs everywhere. And a lot of them, when I go and talk to them, I don't hardly see our kids at all. It's normally little white kids and little Asian kids. And it breaks my heart because I'm doing this to bring more of us along to diversify these fields. But our children are not being signed up for these programs. And sometimes it's a cost. And I understand that. But that's how we have to make things accessible and low cost for all communities to be able to get involved. We were just talking with uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. She was on the show on what was it Thursday, Friday last week, uh, and she's big on the Legos. So uh, she's been building everything, and then she's going to donate after she builds. But I'm like, how are Legos engineering? It is. It's mechanical engineering. It's looking at how things fit together. And now you can make Legos that actually move, like the gears, all of that. My daughter had a gear set that you could add on to the Legos. And you can also write software for them now to make them do things. Little windows opening and closing, little lights going on and off. It's not your mama's Legos anymore. <laughs> All right. So we're here with Dr. Carlotta A. Berry. Um, so you're you're teaching at the college level. What what's the difference? Like um, and talk about some of the people you're training to do what? So I teach electrical and I actually teach all of them. So I am an electrical engineer. So I teach the electrical and computer engineering students. But because I also am part of the robotics minor, which is multidisciplinary, like I said, I teach computer scientists. I teach software engineers. I teach mechanical engineers. I teach biomedical engineers. The school where I work is all science, engineering, and math. So you don't go there unless that's your zhush. So I <laughs> teach all of those areas and they go and do different things. Some of them will go and create software for robotics. Some of them will go work in industrial manufacturing plants like Amazon. 
and design kivas to go and retrieve and pick up packages and put them together. Others of them actually build robots to meet um, technology needs. My PhD was from Vanderbilt, it's actually in human robot interaction. So in that area, it's looking at how do people interact with the robot in a way so that they understand what's going on and that they feel comfortable. Because the Uncanny Valley, speaking of the sex robot, Andrew, is those robots that kind of creep you out. Yeah. That's what the Uncanny Valley is because now it's like, this is too human. It's a little bit too much artificial intelligence and I'm scared of it. So finding that that happy medium where we can use them effectively, but they're not sending us screaming from the house because I don't know what that thing is. <laughs> For real. <laughs> uh, talk, talk about the future, because I feel like, you know, we were the last black folk to get the computer. You know, we were the last to get the cell phone. But when we got the cell phone, oh, my goodness, we we're, <laughs> were the ones to innovate and come up with all of the things mm -hmm. we come into technology and remix it and make it hot. Right. Whether we're talking mm -hmm. about a Twitter or social media platform or, you know, clubhouse type of thing, we come in and bring our goodness. And then the company's valued at a billion dollars. And then yeah. like, you know, then they say buy Negroes and go get their money and ride off into the sunset. I need us to be at the forefront. What do we need to innovate? Like, you know, just uh, recently I, I launched a social media platform and the biggest, it was daunting because I'm like, I've never been on anything first, you know, where it's like, all right, I'm the first person on here. What do I do? You know, usually we're coming into something. It's easy to remix because we have it, you know, whether it's a song or whatever, come in, we know how to make it hot. Talk to us about how to innovate like how to create what's coming next and what is coming next in your opinion? I think we really are a creative people. And the thing is we have to be on the ground floor and opportunity has to meet us at the door. One thing we talk to professors about a lot is if somebody like Melinda Gates comes to you and says, I have money to give to you, they're not going to wait for you to come up with an idea that added that idea needs to be in your back pocket. I need to be like, hey, it's right here. I'm ready, ready to launch whenever you are. So I think we have to meet opportunity at the place where we're technically sound and ready to go. That means you need to have your stuff tightened in order. I'm always thinking, I'm always creating. You know, I'm always looking at what happens if you do this? What happens if you do that? You need to keep track of your ideas and have your stuff ready to go. Learn how to make apps before somebody asks you to make apps. Learn how to launch a social media platform before somebody asks you to, to launch the platform. So doing that is getting ready. You know, some people are, are really on this thing about college debt right now. Obviously I'm a professor, so I, if college, uh, folds. That's my career. But you, the internet is on your cell phone. You could learn on YouTube videos. I also have a YouTube channel where I teach all the basic theory of robotics. So I can't afford to go to college. Doesn't mean you're out of the room. What are you doing with your free time? I think TikTok videos are awesome. I also have some as well, but go and look at some of those educational things and start building and replicating them before somebody needs you. I think the future is going, whether we want it to or not. And the, the question is, where are you going to be? Are you going to be outside looking through the window? Are you going to be at the table where the decisions are being made? What's the hottest what's the hottest spot right now? If you're you're looking across the, the landscape, um, what's the hottest spot right now? What's what's the thing that uh, people are trying to wrap their heads around and figure out right now? And if you can get in, get in. Machine learning. Everybody is trying to get on the forefront of machine learning. Had a conversation with my colleagues today. Schools, because kids are starting to be like, I want to study machine learning. You cannot even get like academics in machine learning in, because another thing, professors don't make a lot of money. So here's another thing. If you're really on top of your game with machine learning, AI, robotics, you're probably in Silicon Valley and you're probably working for a company. So another way for us to train the thought leaders that come behind us is we got to figure out how to get some of those people to do the lowly work of teaching as well, right? But machine learning is hot right now. And the difference- for people who don't know exactly what the difference is with machine learning. I was just about to tell you that I had a girlfriend I was talking to right before um, I came on and she was like, we don't know what you're talking about, sis. You got to break this down into English. So artificial intelligence is writing software to give the robot some kind of human behavior, like writing software so the robot can follow a wall, follow a line, drive to Karen and say hello. That's artificial intelligence. A subset of that is machine learning, where now I don't write the code, I just dump a bunch of data in the computer and it figures it out. This is what happened with the Jeopardy computer that was playing against like Watson? Ken Jennings in one. Watson. 
So yes. they gave Watson all of this information. Yes. Yeah. That's machine learning because I'm not writing the code. I can't write thousands of lines of code. But if I dump all this data in my robot, can it figure out what, what who a Karen is, what Karen has on, recognize that shirt, drive to it without me writing that code? Here's the fear in doing that, though. If all the data is probably predominantly white, predominantly male, this is when the, the problem happens with some software last year where it learned how to be anti-Semitic, it learned how to be biased, and it learned how to be racist because that was the majority of the data that was available to dump on it. Mm. Oh, Dr. Trash Dr. In, Dr. Trash Barry. out. Come on. Trash Dr. In, trash Carla- out. That's right. I use that in class. <laughs> Dr. Carlotta is here. Uh, D-R-C-A Berry, like a raspberry or a strawberry. Dr. C-A Berry is where you can follow her. And Noir, wait, you say that. Noir Stemist. 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 I don't speak French, but Noir is French for black. Stemist <laughs> is a woman who promotes STEM. So I put them together. I'm from the South. I don't know the correct way to say it either. It's stimulus. Nowhere is stimulus, com. Yes. It's a lot, but y'all figure it out. We'll tweet it out as well where you can follow her. Uh, you know, as as Drew is talking about this, I'm I'm like, whoo, can we program a robot to do the crate challenge so nobody breaks their back or their leg? I've, I'm a challenge. I'm a listen. I'm a challenge y'all right now. Do the crate challenge with a robot. Yeah. It's, already done. it's already done. Boston Dynamics. If you go to their YouTube channel, they have robots jumping on crates, jumping over crates, walking on ice. Boston Dynamics YouTube channel already done. Get, get off I, need, I need the hood to come up. Where do we yeah. where do we where will we get the parts to do like and how expensive is that? Because I want to oh, see bo- somebody. Those robots, those robots are one hundred thousand dollars. OK, but well, we're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. But it can already go over crates. Just go to YouTube. It, it can do all of that. <laughs> but I, I will say that what what you can what you can teach children to do with robots is bananas. Um, when I was when I was in Manhattan, I was um, I was executive sponsor for 100 Black Men's Robotics Camp, and 100 Black Men has ro- has summer robotics camps all over the country. Like you can like look it up and see if there's one in your in your um, in your area. And the kids that I um, that I worked with for just a couple of days, because I really was there just to drop off the cardboard check. Right. And but the kids gave me one of the robots that they had trained and they literally had trained it to respond to an iPhone. And the robot would just turn left, right, up and down or whatever. But the fact that these were middle schoolers that had figured out how to how to use an iPhone as a remote control for a robot. Like, I can't wait to see what those kids do in the future. Kids are ready. They're ready because they woke up with their hands on the computer. They woke up with a cell phone in their hands. They are ready. They're they are open sponge. I give workshops for kids and adults. And I will say sometimes the kids come and just take the little Zoom room over like, well, what about this? I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Let me get the old folks caught up. I'm I'm there with you, baby. But, you know, I got to bring grandma along. Kids are ready. (laughs) Um, So uh, this is this is going to be really interesting. I want to keep this going. Dr. Barry, and I want to have you back on and we want to have I want to do the YouTube and and hopefully I'm going to invite you into narrative as well, because this is this is uh, the future and we need to not just be a part of it. We need to help control and direct it. We need to be able to build the world we want to live in and not leave it up to somebody else and then be mad because our hands doesn't recognize our hands under the, the, the dispenser for soap and for the yeah, for the hand blower. I show that, that one in class, too. I show that yep, all of that. Let's, Thank yeah, let's you. stop being mad. Let's get busy. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. We're going to keep having a conversation with Dr. Berry. Dr. C.A. Berry is where you can follow her. 